looks like it's mostly empty. Well, most of it at least. A lift car. So a forklift. The Skypan has probably used this to move the cargo. It's the orbital engine control panel. It looks like the flow of orbital energy has completely stopped. Well, there's still some supplies on here. Here's the steering wheel. Where indeed? Looks like this is the captain's seat. If these were any other circumstances, I would love to sit here. <laughs> Okay, we're on the passenger decks now. Plant murderers. Just another crime to add to their increasingly long rap sheet. Okay, and this would have to be, like, commercial. Ooh. Doesn't seem to be anything out here. Okay, yeah. Uh, is that it? I feel like there should be more. I feel like there should be something on the deck, actually, but... Well, clearly that is not it. I feel like I would probably have been told by the game if my investigation were complete. Mm -hmm. Yep, I already did that. I guess I could just try to leave, but... Oh! There we go! We checked all over, but it looks like there's nobody inside. Mm -hmm. And then to wherever their hideout is. But this sucks! Right when I thought we had some clues, we're back to zero. I mean, I wouldn't say that. We did find the airship. Why do you think the Skyband has hit the airliner in a place like this? Why indeed? Probably it would not fit into their base. As far as I can tell, the orbital energy in the ship has completely stopped. Which means the orbital energy was stripped from the aircraft. I know this because orbital energy in an orbit gradually recharges over time. 
Furthermore, the Sky Bandits made multiple trips to carry off a large amount of cargo. Considering the time and risk involved, don't you think it would have been more efficient to just take the entire airliner to their hideout? Um, hmm. If my theory is that the Sky Pirates did not actually do this to the ship and more just left out is true, uh, if that is indeed the case, it is possible that they found the ship nearly running and dry, and then took it here for looting. Hmm. In which case, if that were the case, they might have some of the people on it, but maybe not everyone, depending on what caused the orbit to become drained in the first place. And it would make sense if they could only get this far simply because it was close enough. Uh... Wait, no, I need the I need the text prompt. <laughs> I wasn't- I was only half paying attention to the dialogue because I was... Okay, so I think they did ditch it here because their hideout is somewhere weird. Maybe 10 or 15 arg inside. In short, a peculiar place on which only a small aircraft, like the Sky Paris airship, could land. There is a valley, not too far from here. There's the possibility that their hideout may be in a place we cannot reach by foot. I hate to say it, but we may have to share our conclusions with the army and ask for their cooperation. Because they're the only ones in patrol ships. I mean, to be honest, we've done their job better than they have, so... <laughs> this is less le this is less asking for help and more telling them to do their job and giving them the information they need to do it. Which they were too incompetent to obtain themselves. Hmm. I think Joshua's right here. Indeed. Ooh. Okay. Let's do that then. Oh. I guess the army found this. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I cannot say that I was expecting this turn of events. I see. What an idiot. <sighs> I hope you don't think for a moment that something like that proves your innocence. And there's the general. This asshole. After looking over the reports of my men, I found this place to have been insufficiently investigated. So I can- okay. Well, it is good to know that at least you are a competent asshole, unlike, un unlike your men. Might I get you to stop with your accusations, General? We happen to find this place one step ahead of your men. We almost had them, but they managed to escape. 
and there are no hostages to be found here. Most likely you notified the Sky Bandits to let them know we were- What is wrong with you? My thoughts exactly! All right, men, take them into cut. Okay, well, I guess we know who is going to end up in that prison cell now, but, uh... <sighs> but also, wow, are you ever letting your ego get in the way of being a competent person? You son of a bitch. I... No kidding. Totally preventing us from actually being able... <sighs> Not only does this ego trip... Like, I cannot think of a worse thing this, ass this guy could have done to prevent... A to prevent anyone from actually tracking down the Sky Pirates. Oh, wow. It's totally believable for his character, too, because man, does he ever have a chip on his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're confident enough to find the Sky Pirates without our help, and uh, they're too self-absorbed and self-important to to accept our help, which they would need to catch them. Yeah, it sounds like he did know the... Oh, you know what? He definitely knew the army was coming. So that would suggest that he has a mold with mole within the army. Oh... That's not good. So they're incompetent and corrupt. Great. And we're presently locked in a cell because of a self-centered general who can't see past his own completely misplaced prejudices. <laughs> I wonder. Uh, is it? Could it be? Oh, how could he say something so heartless? My luxurious voice should be recognized by anyone. Yes! Yes! It's Olivia! You do remember my dulcet chords. Ah, oh, man. Don't, don't listen to what they're saying, Olivia. You're the best. <laughs> to think we would meet again in a place like this. It seems that we were bound by destiny. Why are you here? Actually, why are you here? What did you- yeah. Come now, let's not worry about all the little details, shall we? Did you, like, steal something, or...? I have my reasons, which are deeper than the deepest ocean, and higher than the highest peak. I I'm pretty sure he probably- he probably, like, tried to eat and run or something. You talk so much that you'd probably be an old, uh... I am actually sort of curious. <laughs> it all began after we parted ways. 
I did some window shopping in the Bussy Market, and then moved on to the Antarose restaurant. You see, once I had eaten to my heart's content, I began to play the grand piano to feed my artistic soul. Maybe this is why the manager was panicking. And upon doing so, the restaurant manager was overcome by my skill. So I was asked to stay and work as the professional pianist for the restaurant. Ha! A musical genius is not limited to just one instrument. Anyway, back to my story. After negotiations, a few of my own... After negotiating a few of my own conditions, I accepted the job offer. Those conditions were, of course, food and wine for free every day instead of a mirror. <laughs> I love this guy. Oh, well this is where the real sob story begins. That night, I had been enjoying a plate of sautéed duck I had the chef prepare for me. But the blood sauce which had been used was a little too overbearing for my palate. Consequently, I began to feel that normal red wine was not satisfying enough. Hmm. Well, so I borrowed a bottle of wine which seemed good from the cellar. Something called Grand Chardonnay from the year 1180... What is the current year? legendary vintage wine that was auctioned off in the Royal City! Oh, aren't you well informed? I heard a rumor about it too, so of course I was interested in having a drink for myself. From what I heard, it went for somewhere in the neighborhood of 500,000 Mira! Oh, and he drank it. 500,000 Mira gone. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, you deserve to be locked up in, in here. Maybe not for a long-term basis, but... <laughs> oh. Ha! Such a needless question. Of course I opened the bottle and had a sip. Its sweet-smelling fragrance tickled my nostrils. Its luxurious, mellow taste caressed my throat. And can you believe what else? A rose-tinted vignette of time and space existed within that very bottle. <laughs> the sad thing is that after taking a sip of such excellent wine, I began to feel the food was lacking. And as I was having the chef cook me up something else to match the wine, the restaurant manager returned. Since I'm not a stingy fellow, I cordially invited him to join me for a drink. But for some odd reason, he got rather upset. In fact, he got so stinging mad that his face looked like a ripe tomato. And before I could say another word, a group of soldiers came filing in. And, well, one thing led to another. I can't say another word about this tragedy of being dragged all the way here without coming to tears. <laughs> so let us all weep together as you sympathize with my dilemma. <laughs> Do my ears deceive me? Could it, I could have sworn I heard a uh, sleep. And sleep, and even an assuredly misheard idiot coming from your cell. Are you listening? This is where the story gets really interesting. You see, several further trials awaited me after I was brought here. <laughs> I seriously love that guy. He is the best. 